Hi everyone, it's June 7th, and this is your Chaos Weekly Community Call. I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager. So it's good to see everyone here today. Hope you're all having a good day. So far, Here's so the minutes here. And I believe it's Matt that asked the question of if you could go to space, would you do it given the chance? So if you feel like answering that, feel free to do that. I absolutely would not do it because I like earth and I don't want to float away. But other people are more adventurous than me, so. You can yes. stay in the spaceship. <laughs> stuff goes wrong, Matt. So stuff goes wrong, it has to be fixed. And yeah, it'd be a, a whole Apollo 13 scenario again. I'd go with one of those battle-hardened spaceships where there's no danger. <laughs> well, yeah, in a perfect world. Stuff always goes wrong. Uh, you know how software works? Are you kidding? Oh, I do. Yeah, I know. Like, no way. <laughs> it is no true. Way. Like in every space movie, somebody gets sucked out the vacuum seal. Yeah. <laughs> that's, is... that's what I'm saying. I don't want to be that person. And the only way to me to guarantee that is not me is to not go. So well, I'll sit here and actually on Earth where we belong. <laughs> Think of all the great pictures you could take in outer space, though. That is true. That is true. But you know, I, I get like, I'm afraid of heights really badly. So I could, I would freak out. I would yeah, freak out as it's going up. Super Heidi, as it were, as it were. Very Heidi. Yeah. About as Heidi as you can get, I think. So yeah, it's like my personal, that and tornadoes, being sucked out of a spaceship and tornadoes, those are my two biggest fears in life. So anyway, I digress. Sorry, <laughs> everyone. We do have stuff to talk about today, like important stuff. So let me share. All right, here it is. I think I'm the only one. So I'll stay here and, and, man, and keep the keep the fort going, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah you'll keep chaos going. That's right. Space. Maybe as a nope. Space tornadoes. <laughs> space tornadoes, yes. That would be. Space nados. That is my personal hell, is a space tornado. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't. Yeah, anyway. Now I have that in my head. Okay, so let's jump in to our agenda. Now that I'm gonna be traumatized forever. Um, <laughs> the first one, um, we are gonna have Matt G give us a quick update on the DEI working group. And I moved your project badging under yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we're like all working groups, we're continuing to reflect on the metrics that have been released. Um, maybe I should put this in the minutes, but one thing is, for the working groups, and we can talk about this in each of the working groups. Um, if you have a metric that you are just kind of changing, like doing some minor changes to it, and then you have another metric that you're doing minor changes to, and you have a third metric that you're doing minor changes to, if you could just open up a single issue in the translations repo that says, here are the three updated metrics that have minor changes to them. So just one issue in the translations repo associated with these changes. If you do have a metric that's going through a very substantial revision, then when you update the, or when you post an issue in the translations repo, could you just do one issue per major update metric? So minor changes kind of pool them together and for major changes, just one issue in the translations repo. Um, we're starting to, I think, gain some momentum on project badging. As a lot of you know, one of our challenges around project badging is the volume of projects and our desire to still have an open and transparent process by which badging can occur. Uh, so kind of this large number of projects with a limited number of reviewers, those numbers don't go together real well. So we've been trying to think about ways to, um, ways to think about how to do project badging. One of our approaches that we're starting to explore is as a project is applying for a badge, one of the things that we ask for is a DEI.MD file somewhere in their org, not quite sure where yet. Um, and on that DEI.MD file, it would be a written description from the project as to how they attend to you know, three to five chaos metrics associated with their project. And this would allow us to simply 
from a review perspective, just take a look at a single document from a reviewer amongst a variety of other things, but largely just a, a single document um, where we can kind of reflect on um, a project's uh, attention to centering DEI. Um, another nice thing about having a DEI MD file we were talking about is that it is a, now a permanent file within a project's repository. And it, it's nice for community members to potentially be able to read uh, such a file, <laughs> like how does this project attend to diversity, equity, and inclusion? So not just from a badging perspective, but from a, a signaling perspective for the project. We're still kind of working out what metrics would be uh, in that DEI.MD file, um, but I thought I'd bring that forward. Um, we're working with event badging to update how we request or how a, a project would request a badge. Right now, event badging uses a, a web form, and that web form opens an issue. It looks like we're going to be moving over to uh, just using GitHub to open the issue. Um, and then also how we thinking about how we can use the bots that are developed in event badging to kind of help with the workflow over on project badging as well. Our goal here is to, to not have two different processes, one for event badging and one for not, how about this, not have two fundamentally different processes, one for event badging and one for project badging. It would be great if they could overlap at least 80% or 85% or something like that. So the work could be shared between the two, uh, between the two programs. Um, let's see. So with respect to still with badging, you can take a look at that link. Uh, thanks, Ayush, for putting that together. Let's see. Is this what you're talking about, Sophia? Oh, oh, you're talking about the DEI.md file. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, we do. Um, when I stop talking, I'll track that down and put it into the chat in the minutes as well. Um, and so this is, Ayush has put this together. Um, so thanks, Ayush. This is by no means the kind of what the final submission would look like. This is just to kind of show you that we can do this via GitHub. And so we'll change this around a little bit as we kind of, um, kind of hone in on, on what the actual questions are for the application. All right, could you go back to the, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, sorry, I just joined in. I want to ask if this application process would just be for um, project budget and will you replicate with event, event budget? That's the GitHub issue form. Um, yeah, we'll try to, so that form right now is just for event, or I'm sorry, it's just for project badging. But I think mm -hmm. the hope is, is that we would also do something similar in event badging. Okay. Thank you. Great. Got, got you. Yep. Um, and like I was saying, Ruth, I don't know if you had heard me. The hope is, is that like 85% of the work around badging in general can be shared between event badging and project badging. There will be some slight variations between the two. Um, but the, the hope is, is that we can share things like um, how to create issues and how to do bot activity, kind of the, the whole workflow. Hopefully we can share a lot of that. Down. Down. Okay, great. I, yeah, I think it will work. Right on. Um, okay, so then um, Elizabeth, maybe you could just talk about the appreciation event. I know that's, I'm talking about DEI stuff. Yeah. For... So just as a um, reminder, to everybody, you're all invited to this. It's um, just a one hour fun appreciation event to just um, show appreciation for our reviewers because they are volunteers and it does take some of their time to do it. And that's the whole, um, they're like the, the reason that the badging um, initiative is so successful is all of our awesome reviewers. So we just wanted to give a quick appreciation event for them. You're all welcome to attend. You don't have to be a reviewer or be involved in the event badging initiative at, in any way, shape or form. Feel free to just sign up right here. The link is in the minutes there. And again, it's just an hour long fun present uh, meetup thing yes. that we're doing. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what else to say about it, but um, yeah. And we did just um, include four new badge uh, event badgers. So hooray, hooray. 
And if you are ever interested I, I, in- I still can't hear you. It, you're, oh. you're fading in and out. Could you mute Nicole? There we go, okay. Um, if you are interested in becoming an event reviewer, you can sign up uh, with this form here and we will get you trained and get you all the information you need to be a badger. So that's what we call our reviewers, our badgers, because they're awesome. Any, if anybody has any questions, just let me know about that. Great, uh, thanks for that. And then Ruth, I'm gonna kind of, if you wanna talk about the burnout and mental health session on June 17th, maybe you could click that, Elizabeth. Yeah, sure. So hi everyone, would be having um to or uh, a burnout session. So for more context, GitHub um is hosting Maintainer Mantra the month of June, and we signed up to facilitate a session on burnout and mental health in open source. So kind of like um talk with maintainers on how they manage burnout and mental health, and also kind of be like talking about um. Uh, the metric that we have on burnout as well and hearing from other maintainers so this will happen on 17th of june there's this is um the agenda we would go through we kind of put up like a slide um and this slide kind of contains um the burnout metric the different um things we talked about with burnout metric so this will, will do like a introductions and then you know, it's an interactive session. So we want maintainers that attend the session to kind of like give an experience, share on burnout, um, you know, personal experience and we'll talk about the burnout metric and then we'll let for questions. So please, you can attend this. We have like a link, um, uh, there's, there should be a link, the Google form, yeah to register you can register and you can also invite maintainers that you know you can send the form to them and um, before june 17 to send in the link we're going to use zoom for this so we're sending the link for the session so yay yeah I can, way to go all right it's awesome uh, thank you for that ruth much appreciated um 10 days 10 days from now so that is the DEI working group update. That was meaty. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, there's a lot of substance there. Thank you. A lot going on. Can I ask Ruth a question? I'm just curious, can you can you see if people have registered for it? Or is that something they only share with you right before the actual Yeah, um, I have access to the form. We created the form here. Like the okay. form was created from chaos. So I have access to the form. Um, let me check that. I'll check that in a second, give you feedback. Yeah, I have access to the form of uh, the form attendees. Oh, I, see the form. I assume we should keep reposting on Twitter and stuff and keep this because I know I saw one of the tweets come out from the central chaos handle. Yeah, I'm assuming we could probably give it a little bit more visibility yeah sure and i think uh github is also going to be posted on that end i can since it's like on their site <laughs> it should be good help us get more well, uh, also, it's also the action item for both of us um so yeah tweet. well i will keep retweeting and i, I plan to attend as a note taker so i'll be there Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Okay. So next thing is the philosophical question about metrics. <laughs> I don't know if we want to like maybe put some constraints around this conversation because I feel like it could it could take the whole thing. Um, let's say maybe like five minutes. I don't know. Ten minutes. What do you guys think? I know we did want to try to meet with Chaos Con, but also we have a lot of other things exciting to talk about. So let's do Chaos Con async. Is that cool? Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, so the, I can represent from the evolution working group. 
we you know as we've been reviewing metrics there are there's significant variation in how much technical insight is provided and how much detail is provided on implementing the metrics if you look at the evolution working group in some cases we do have actual code if you look at some of the non trace data metrics we have for example in dei there's a lot of clear specification of the questions that would be asked in a survey for example and i think we're just trying to get a sense of what is the right level of insight on the one hand we think many people are coming to the chaos project now looking for things they can implement right away so some direction in in that space is probably going to meet the needs of newcomers on the other hand we don't want to get too bogged down in defining technical definitions in the metrics themselves and i don't we don't have an answer but um that's just kind of the question we're wrestling with and we welcome any thoughts insight either here or perhaps asynchronously in the wg evolution channel on slack so is this particularly with respect to the implementation yeah yeah it's exactly the section that that would typically fall into and where we see we see just variation not just within our working group but across the community and I, I don't know that we can get an answer today, but it would be good to get some general consensus about how to think about that. And maybe it's something others can take back to their working groups and put in their head while they go through the metrics review process this cycle. Over the years, we have gradually backed off because to your, I think you brought this up, Sean, like we used to have SQL statements. Yeah, example. we still we still do in some. <laughs> okay. Generally speaking, we've kind of backed off that level of right. specificity. And um, it does feel like, as you mentioned, like interview questions, they don't cover everything, but they help orient a person. Right. So it's not really a suggestion one way or the other. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that we expected an answer here, but. Yeah, for example, I would say I'm reviewing a couple of metrics in which has a lot of SQL queries. So I'm still struggling. Should I keep those SQL queries or I'll just simply get rid of them? Or like I don't know. So I mean the SQL, I mean I think we could get rid of them because it's um well, it won't work. Yeah, it may or may not work. But uh but, uh, what are those queries querying? Like, what platform are they using? Uh, Auger. If they're queries, they're using Augur. Okay, so it's, so it's an Augur specific uh, yeah. implementation. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a good chance they still work, but they should be at least verified. Even at some places, they are accessing Grimoire Lab too, not only Augur. Some of them are for the Grimoire Lab. So, not sure whether Grim Grimoire Lab those are screenshots where you do some queries are still working or not so i feel like there's always a balance like i know sometimes if you look at some of the metrics descriptions if they're pretty general if you see an example implementation even if it's a query that i can't run just by looking at how the query is structured it helps me understand what you're actually counting and how you're counting it so i think i don't know i feel like that's not a great answer but I generally like some detail around implementation because if there's any overly general language that we've used in this description to make it as pl platform extensible as possible, when it comes down to actually implementing it, it might be too generic. So having implementation guidance or examples can help to clarify how we've interpreted it in this context. Um, but maybe we could also separate that out as either provide general implementation guidance and then maybe we can keep examples of, but noting that they're examples, not this is what you have to do because it might not run depending on the system or tool that you're using. I feel like this would be a really good use of our forums um, that the metric itself is pretty, 
pretty bare bones or pretty, you know, straightforward and, and simple, I guess. But in the forums is where maybe we could have more conversations about implementation and specifics and discussion about things around that metric. That would be my, um, because if we keep the, all that great level of detail, I think someone else mentioned this, is that every time we do a review, we have to go back and check that these long just instructions are still valid, if there's a better way to do stuff, if it, we have to add now, because some of them just had Grimoire Lab, they didn't even mention Augur, so like, should we have both? And I don't know, it just felt like it's really valuable information, but it's also something we have to maintain in the future. Whereas a forum, it's more of like interactive, it's more fluid, uh, people maybe understand that this has been, um, you know, an old post. So maybe these don't work anymore. Well, here's what I do now to get it to work like that kind of thing. I feel like would be a good use of in the forums to do that. I would like to point out that while in the while in the metrics, we have uh, been moving away from these these specific implementations. Uh, in the models working group, we're going in the opposite direction, and we are providing very, very explicit implementations or, or example implementations. So the, uh, and those are called implementations as well. Uh, so what, what's the difference between an implementation in a metric versus a model? And, uh, and then with the, uh, with the model implementations, we do run into a lot of the issues that uh, I, I believe that we will run into a lot of the issues that Elizabeth just mentioned. So we have to maintain those. I did like, Sophie, I don't even know if you know you said it, but you called it general implementation guidance. Like I kind of like that as a, it doesn't have to be that, but something like that is the heading because implementation applies. This is the implement, this is the implementation of the metric. And general implementation guidance is more like what you were talking about, like just help me locate myself as to how this metric might live in the world and. Um, and how I as a person might approach this metric and. Like a, a SQL statement is just kind of that it's just, it's just kind of guidance towards that metric and same with. Uh, uh, like the interview questions they're just kind of that as well they're just kind of guidance to help orient people as to how to think about the metrics. So maybe I like that. Perhaps we can change that header to reflect general guidance. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah, exactly. And that'd be a pretty easy change. So we pretty much solved that whole problem and we have one minute left. Done. Awesome job, Boom. Boom. I think I think that adds some distinction between the model implementations and the uh, metrics implementations as well. So that's good. Bernard, does that answer your questions, then, about whether or not to leave them in the metrics that exist? Yes, to some level. Rock on. All right, if no one has any objections, then I suggest we move on because we have exciting things to talk about. So I, we, we may want to, uh, we may, may want to change some of the language along with that heading, just change some of the language in that, that section to, to show that those, those implementations are example implementations or, uh, so, so that might be one way you look at, rather than getting rid of the SQL queries, just uh, change some of the language. I was thinking of putting a one line and notice that like these were the examples which were when this metric was developed. So not sure whether they will work in future, but as a guidance, something like that as a disclaimer in the metric. All right, sounds good. So let's move on then, because we have exciting things to talk about that are new items. So I'm going to let Matt talk about Chaos Africa. Well, and, and Ruth here too. So starting in mid-June, we're going to be launching Chaos Africa. So to support uh, our efforts there, um, I'm just really, really excited about this. Um, is that the planning document that somebody just put in there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Ruth, yeah. I'm going to turn it over to you if you could, if you want to talk just kind of about what's what's on your mind with respect to Chaos Africa and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, first is exciting, like Nicole said. Um, yeah, it is exciting to like kind of start this up and I'm happy to be leading alongside with it. So the plans we have here for Chaos Africa, they are kind of like two out um you know, run them off into one is to look for ways to um, solve challenges, community challenges here from Africa, right, using the chaos model and uh, creating new initiatives that solve challenges here um, related to Africans, right, African contributors, and also would also contribute to the larger chaos project, software documentation, um, design, and other um, initiatives within chaos, but we'll also, like I said, and I would the first point, we'll also find ways to solve challenges facing African open source communities, right? So there are a whole lot of things um, I have in plan, and I can't wait to meet everyone that will be involved in this community and plan together. So we'll start off um, next week, um, we'll have weekly things and would keep interacting with um, existing contributors, Africans within chaos, and see how to spread the word and also get like other contributors to come join Chaos Africa. So this is a strategy doc. Um, still, if you have any thoughts, um, you see um, Justin put in a cool lot of useful comments and all that stuff. So if you have any thoughts um, with this on this, you can add in a comment or a suggestion and definitely would be helpful. So I'm excited to start this off and yep. And we're super excited. We're super excited to have you leading this too, Ruth. So that's just awesome. Any questions for Ruth or um, the other thing is like Ruth has kindly agreed to either through twitter spaces or some sort of, of of live live kind of real time approach uh to also talk about the the challenges and the successes and kind of what what is learned uh in this process to not only help improve cast africa but to help other communities who are, are looking to do something similar um, and so kind of learning learning both ways and just really excited about this yeah i just want to add this really be a good opportunity for Kiosk to extend and broaden its uh, horizon across a growing startup community because if you look at the uh, Africa has one of the world fastest growing startup communities for developers and software in, in general. So this kind of uh, ecosystems, business ecosystems that are building on building on projects and product will really make us to think and rethink our matrices in different dimensions. If you look, most of the things happening right now in the West, they have grown to maturity. They, have, they are taking a new dimension on some kind of things. But this uh, African, I think it's a very good idea. And it's something that we should really put our efforts to, to help it grow. Yeah, because it's an expansion and we'll get, get more uh, challenging task there to solve and to collaborate. It's something really good. So thank you, Ruth, for this uh, initiative too. Thanks, Armstrong. Ruth, you mentioned uh, weekly syncs. Do you have those scheduled yet or are those in the process of being scheduled? Yeah, process of being scheduled, but now yeah. it's in fall. <laughs> Okay, no worries. I was just gonna share that if, if you had that already, but that's totally fine. Totally fine. Were you? Did you grab Chaos Africa Twitter? No, yeah, but I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> I can do I it too. Do it. <laughs> okay, yeah, you you could you could help me do it. Okay, no problem. Nobody do it now. Let Matt do it. Yeah. <laughs> or Ruth, somebody. <laughs> no, yeah. That's happened before when I was on projects. Somebody was. I'm gonna get it first. Anyway, um, yeah, awesome. I'm so excited, Ruth. This is gonna be so great. I'm really, really happy.
Any questions or any final comments, thoughts about this before we move on? All right, I see lots of plus ones in the chat. Lots of people excited about this too, so that's great. Okay, next item is Wellness Weeks, June or July. Might put that in there. Why not both? I, mean, I, I was just thinking we have OSSNA coming and like around the holiday season, we take like two weeks off of meetings. You know, there's still work that gets done oftentimes like async. I was just totally putting this out there as a, as a thought that we take a break from Zoom meetings and I was thinking just Zoom meetings, like we could still do other things as well, like through Slack or whatever, but I don't know, just a thought. Like around the holidays or right now, or what do you think? Oh, June or July. Yeah. Like, cause we do it in, we do it around yeah. the holidays. Yeah, that's and true. We could just do it. We have OSSNA coming up late June. And typically that week anyway, we don't meet. We just kind of cancel meetings because a lot of people are in Austin for that week. Um, we could do a set of two different weeks that's not that week like that would be three weeks total um we could do that week and the week before or that week and the week after of just no zoom meetings that's all i think that's a good idea i will also give an enthusiastic plus one to that <laughs> <laughs> Plus all the thumbs. If I had more than two, I would thumb up them all. I have two, so I can. There. <laughs> there we go. There's four. There we go. Good enough. Um, do we yeah. want? So what? What weeks do we want to decide? I mean, Sophia I think, says she's out. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I think uh, trying to align it with the European vacation schedule, so like something like mid July to mid August might just kind of nicely slide into the European vacation schedule. Yeah, I, I had thought about that. And then, and then I stuck with June, <laughs> June uh, July. <laughs> yeah, um, that was that was just me. But yeah, I'm, I'm like, July is pretty light. August is tougher, because we do have um, open source summit Europe coming up. When we get to August, so I mean, I could just see July. And I'm not talking like a whole month. I was just saying like yeah. two weeks. I mean, what would any, yeah, any two weeks in July then, whichever ones work. Well, okay. <laughs> Somebody pick them. Did you did you not like the OSSNA and then the week after? That works too. Yeah, I don't not like it. I was just, I threw out the European thing and I think I got sidetracked. Okay, so this uh, this week, June twenty is it June twentieth through the twenty? Well, we don't have meetings on Mondays really, but. Yeah, it would be the week of the 20th through the 24th and then the 27th through the 1st. Okay. That would be the, that's the current. And OSSNA is that first week. Okay. Anyway. Right. Okay. And then so Sean, been, okay. Sean had suggested a block in July. Yeah. In but, August. But I'm totally fine with whatever. something to August. Okay. So those are those two options. Do we want to just decide today? Yeah. Do we want to put it back out to the community? What do you guys want to do? Um, um, just decide. <laughs> <laughs> right. As soon as we, yeah, open. I mean, I don't know. It seems like a fairly big thing, but maybe it's not that big of a thing. We could put it in the general channel, but that might just drag things out. True. Uh, okay, the other, other people to speak up. There we go. Yeah. Does any other people on the call have <laughs> comments? 
So the, the other consideration that we have is that we have Google Summer of Code and Google Summer of Doc projects running. Um, yeah. Those are likely going to require some some Zoom coordination. Yeah, I, not, I don't get I a bot from Zoom, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had thought that too. I was just talking about like the community call meetings and if you want to connect just, with them. Just this but, one or the working groups or? Yeah, I was thinking the working groups, but now that you're saying that like the website meeting, you know, like that's kind of the point of connection. Right. You know, for the, um, for those students. I mean, maybe not all of them, like some that have to, that are involved in mentorship could still meet. Well, like it has to be all or none, I guess. Well, the suggestion brought us to a screeching halt. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do it. It's so sad because it's such a great suggestion. Everyone's <laughs> so excited about it. They can't. I, I really like it. My only concern is the the Google Summer of Code, Google Summer of Docs projects. How about this? If you like it, do you think we could still do the mentorship through this period? You know what I mean? We'd yeah. have to, yeah. All right, let's do these two weeks then. Okay. All right. Sounds you good. You know, SSNA it would, ha would likely happen anyway. I'll just be honest with you. That's typically what happens right. on those weeks anyway whether it's OSSNA or OSSEU. I think we usually we usually take the week off of the 4th of July as well. Oh, yeah. American holiday. However, that, that's on a Monday this year. Okay. So we don't have meetings on Monday anyway, so the, the two weeks prior to that maybe kind of counts as that. Um, yeah, July 5th then. Okay. Yeah. July 5th is when we come back, or July 5th is... When we come back. Yep. Okay. That's well, I'm taking I'm taking the first three weeks of July off. Yep. <laughs> so, so you're not I'll coming be, back. But so you all come back. back. <laughs> you all come back. I won't be here. Y'all come back. Yeah. I'll just be yeah regrouping from my move and well, everything else. So, fair yes. enough. Well, then to Take Kevin's point, like as if we announce this or as we announce it, like on the general channel, just also so you know if you need to meet, go ahead. I mean, like particularly around mentorship. Yeah, I don't. I would expect mentorship will keep going because it has to. This isn't like a you cannot meet. <laughs> no, it's you know our regularly scheduled meeting cadence will just be suspended for this time because yeah. we're all going to have open source. A lot of us are going to open source Summit North America, and that just eats up a bunch of time. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it in the newsletter and stuff too, but yeah. Okay. Does anyone have questions on that? I do not. All right. Um, okay. Uh, oh, before we forget, this is an important thing that Katie just dropped in here. The badging uh, appreciation event has changed. The link has changed. Oh, um, here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So I just, while we were talking, actually went and updated the actual event. Um, it, there was a, in order to give control of some other rooms I had on my account over, they had to cannibalize one account I had and make me another one. So I had to change the link room and recreate it. Technical issues. <laughs> so the link is changed. It's still on big blue button. Um, it is just um, a different couple of letters at the end now. So. I've updated it on the event. I put an update in the event. Like it said, do you want to add an update? So I added an update. I think it emailed everybody who's already RSVP'd. Any new RSVPs will have the new link. So I'm hoping that catches everyone and people should be informed. I'll let everybody know at meetings before next event as well. Do we need to re-register? I don't think so. It I updated the event and I sent out an email or I sent put an update and it said it was going to notify all current registration people. Okay. So um you should at least I sent the new put the new link in the event update. 
and it should at least say uh my message to everybody was like we look forward to seeing you but the link has changed here's the new link like please make sure your event um, on your calendar is updated thank you so much katie thanks for dropping that in there for us um okay so this we were it was just on here because we've talked about that so we just put it in the minutes just for reference the only two things left then are mentorship and the next working group update Benad, are you okay to do a value update next week yep. awesome thank you and then i'm guessing matt put this on here just to check in with everybody on mentorship yeah just seeing how things are going that's all you know, I know that like the from a mentor perspective, we're in the state now of having to turn in um, evaluations, and I just want to make sure that things are going okay for everybody. And if you are a mentee and you're on this call and you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to your mentors or to really anybody in the community to help get guidance if you're feeling. A, a little bit lost. Well, aren't, aren't we still in the bonding period for uh, Google Summer of Code, or is that ended? We Google are. Summer of Code is still bonding. Yeah. No, okay. we're still still in the bonding period. But like outreachy, the first uh, review was due yesterday. Am I correct? Yeah, yesterday. So they're all just at slightly different stages. All right, well, I guess it's going okay. Sounds <laughs> Nobody's like saying it. otherwise. Silence so. means good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bad. yeah, silence is golden. <laughs> okay, so we have two minutes. I'm guessing we probably don't have time to do chaos con committee unless y'all want to. Not probably in two minutes. So. I would say if anything, just timeline reminders. I think we have our reviews are in progress. So when, we, when should we complete those? I, I dropped everything in Slack today. Great, thank you. So just everybody check Slack if you're in the Chaos Con committee. Um, all right, well, anything else before we go? Any final questions, comments, concerns, issues, whatever? No, I think we're good. Fantastic, all right. Well, I hope everybody has a good rest of your day. Thanks again for popping in here today. Team Space Cowboy. Yeah, I'm not on that team. Yeah, I'm Space, <laughs> I'm space Cowboy team. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks again, everybody, for showing up. We'll see you next time. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.